Hello, I'm back for another genetic algorithms video. Although this video actually that you're watching right now is not just a video about something you could do for genetic algorithms. This video is ultimately about picking from a list of things randomly, but picking some things more often than other things. And this is a thing that you do have to do. Oh, where's my eraser? Over here. I'm coming, I'm coming. This is a thing that you have to do. Um, in, with a genetic algorithm because we want, to, we want to have a population of elements and we want to pick certain members of that population that have scored a higher fitness score to uh, have their genetic information more likely passed down to the next generation. But let's, 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 let's erase our minds of the wonder that is genetic algorithms and just start with a very simple scenario. I'm going to create a JavaScript object um, and this, this marker has a very interesting smell. Uh, and it's going to have uh, things in it like uh, mango, five, uh, blueberry, three, uh, cherry, uh, one, and apple, one. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to pick one, fr I want to pick a fruit randomly. I want a function that says pick fruit. When I call that function, I'm going to get out of it returned a particular fruit. Maybe mango, maybe blueberry, maybe cherry, maybe apple. And I am going to get mango five times as often as I'm going to get apple. I'm going to get mango, and I wrote these numbers very specifically to add up to 10, because it's very easy for me to just sort of do the math here. But I'm going to get mango, I want to get mango 50% of the time, blueberry 30% of the time, cherry 10% of the time, and apple 10% of the time. This relates to so many different kinds of scenarios that you might do <laughs> in computer programming, if that makes sense. Okay. So how do we do this? Now, you've, if you've been watching some of my other genetic algorithm videos or other videos, I've done this a number of different ways. One way that I've done this is I've built a separate array. And I've, what I've done with that array is I've put, I just said, hey, let's put mango in it five times. I'm just going to write M. Mango's in this array five times. And then I'm going to put blueberry in this array three times. And then I'm going to put uh, cherry in at once and apple in at once. So if I had a bucket full of all these letters and there's five M's in it, three B's, one C, one A, and I shuffle it around and pick one out randomly, I'm going to pick M more five times as often as I'm going to pick A. <clears throat> so um, that's one way of doing it. Now there's a bit of an issue with this way of doing it. This works really nicely for this, but if I have thousands of elements and thousands of different, pro and, and like, a vast array of probabilities, some of which are very, 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 very small probabilities. I then have to build this array that just has so much stuff in it. It's not a really efficient performance, good performance solution. And, and that's actually, if you look at a lot of my examples, that's the solution I'm using. It doesn't work so great. So I'm going to propose, I'm going to, I'm not proposing this. So this is, I didn't invent this. I'm just talking about it. I'm going to look at another solution. Now, there is another solution to this problem, which is a, a way that you could sort of pick random numbers twice. So what, two random numbers. So each one of these, 0, 1, 2, 3. So on the one hand, I'm just picking a random number, 0, 1, 2, or 3. And I could do that easily by saying, uh, it depends you know, in JavaScript or in processing, actually, floor um, uh, random 4. And this will give me 0, 1, 2, or 3. So this is one way that I could do this. But if I do that, I'm just going to get each one of these 25% of the time. But if, in addition to picking one of these randomly, I picked another random number just between 0 and 1. So this is the fruit that I'm picking. And this is kind of my like test number. If I pick another random number, that random number has to be less than the probability in order for, me to, for this first random thing to qualify. So I might have to do this a bunch of times. Like I might pick 3, then 0.7, and then 2 and 0.4, and then 1 and 0.8, and then 0 and 0.6, and then 3 and 0.01. Or, you know, ah, apple qualifies. So you can see mango is going to be able to qualify. If I pick 0, 50% of the time, this second random number is going to be fine. But if I pick apple, only 10% of the time is this second random number going to be fine. So that's one way. The problem with this way is, I, you know, with, again, with a lot of elements and a lot of probabilities, I can be stuck doing this 
over, I can, you know, that loop can take many, 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 many times before it finds a qualifying random number. So, this video, I'm going to program an entirely different algorithm. Uh, it was suggested to use this algorithm in a GitHub issue. I will uh, link to that GitHub issue in this video's description, which is, hello, description down there. I'm trying to get used to where things are. Over there is some, no, maybe over there is like an ad. I don't know what you, if, don't, no, if, I, I don't know if you, don't, don't click on it. Maybe click on it. I don't know. I'm, now, I'm, now I'm all stressed out. Okay, uh, never mind all that. There's stuff around me. I'm a person in a YouTube video. But, um, <sighs> there was a point to all this, wasn't there? Ah, okay. So uh, I will also, uh, in a moment, bring up that GitHub issue to look at it um, on, the, in, on the computer, because I do have a computer over there, which I will get to eventually. Okay, so what is this other algorithm? Well, one way you could imagine is, let's say I created, I don't know what this is, a tube, a pipe, a rectangle, some sort of two-dimensional space. And I said, ah, 50% of that space is Mango's space. And 30% of that space is Blueberry's space. And 10% uh, of that space is Cherry. And 10% of that space is Apple. And this down here is zero. And up here is one. So what if I just pick a random number now between zero and one? And it's almost like throwing a dart. I could be over here, and I'm going to throw a dart. Let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. I missed. <laughs> but actually, it landed over here, Blueberry. I'm going to be more likely, there's more space for me to hit with Mango than there is for Blueberry, than there is for Cherry and Apple. Now, I don't, I'm not going to build some whole entire like dart throwing simulation thing <laughs> in my sketch. So I need a mechanism to do this, to pick the random number and figure out where I am. And actually, a way that I could, the way that this could work is I can actually start up here. Uh, I can pick a random number and then start subtracting values and find out at what point do I sort of exit this space? So hopefully I'm going to program that algorithm. We'll look at it. Hopefully it'll work. And then we'll come back here and sort of see if this makes more sense to us then. Okay? Um, I'm going over there now. Okay, here I am back in this, uh, vi this screen with my computer. Um, so this is the GitHub issue that I was referencing. There's a link to it in the video's description. Uh, Spectron, thank you for this original suggestion. And then also uh, SinclairZ81. Oh, this is from a while ago. <laughs> it took me a while to get to this. Um, uh, has a very like fancy, crazy, ooh, look at this, unicorn uh, uh, implementation of it that uses like ES6 and all sorts of cool, interesting JavaScript syntax that, ooh, <clears throat> I don't fully understand. Uh, oh, but I will understand someday. Okay, so um, I'm going to do my own. So let me close those and let's, let's write some code. Okay, so first of all, let's quickly, I should have done this in advance. Okay, uh, there's a little pause there where I decided actually what I want to do is write the information. I want to pick one of the, I, it's easier for me to put it in an array. Because what I want to do is pick one of these elements from the array and then I want the probability of how I pick it to be something relative to its score. So the first thing that I need to do, by the way, is I need to normalize all of these scores to values between 0 and 1 and so that they all add up to 1. I want them to be a percentage. And um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just loop through every single fruit And what I need to do is I need to add up all the scores. I need to find out what do they all add up to. Sum equals zero. And I'm going to say sum plus equal um, fruits index i dot score. Then the next thing I'm going to do, now here's the thing. I might want to retain that score value or I, might, I be, could just overwrite it. But ultimately what I want to do, I'm going to say fruits index i dot score equals fruits index i, and I know I could say divide equals, but I'm just going to write this all the way out. Fruits index i dot score divided by sum. So the idea is I want to normalize all of those scores. So all I need to do is add up the total and divide each one by the total. That's exactly what I would have done here. I get 10, 5 divided by 10 is 50%, 3 divided by 30%, you know, and the math is never going to work out this perfectly, but who cares because the computer's doing it, not us. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do here is I am going to go back to the browser and I'm going to refresh. You know, this canvas is here for no reason. Um, I'm just, and I'm going to look at fruits. And we can see here that 
Now the scores are normalized, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. And I could, if I want to, it might make sense to say, actually, I'm going to add a new property to each one of these objects. I'm going to say, like, norm score for, like, or I'm going to just call it probability, for probability. Fruits index i dot probability. So now I'm going to hit refresh. I'm going to look at that fruits array, and I'm going to see here. Now it retained the score and has a probability of 0.5. And as you can see, if I were to go here and add you know, one other fruit, like a uh, melon, and give it a score of, you know, 7.7. <laughs> then if I hit refresh and look at fruits, you can see now I've got five, and it's worked it out. Like, it's, the math isn't so clean because it doesn't add up to 10, but mango now has a 29% chance of being picked, and melon has a 41% chance of being picked. So this is good. So now, how do I pick one of these randomly according to its probability. This, now, I've, now it's time for me to write an algorithm that implements this particular, write some code that implements this particular idea, this particular algorithm. We throw a dart, dart and find a place in here. So the way that I'm going to do that is, first I'm going to write a function. I'm going to call it uh, pick one, <laughs> and it's going to receive a list. So I'm going to have a generic function that could work with any list of things. Now, it's going to be set up to work in such a way that the list of things is made up of objects that have a property called prob for probability. But you know, obviously, I could make this more generic in other ways as well. OK, so the first thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say var index equals 0. So I'm going to sort of assume that the one that I'm going to pick is the first one. Then I'm going to pick a random number between 0 and 1.0. And I'm going to say, as long as r is less, is greater than 0, then I'm going to say r equals r minus that particular object's probability. So let's think about this for a second. What I'm saying is that. Let's say I have something with a probability of 0.9, and I have something with a probability of 0.1. OK, Th I shouldn't draw this right. <laughs> Time out. I shouldn't draw it right next to this, because I'm going to do something different now. So I'm going to use, <laughs> where is I don't have any space. I'm going to come over here. This is fine. Let's just say a simplified arrangement, where I, this is my like bar here, and I have something that has A as a probability of 0.9 and B as a probability of 0.1. The first thing that I did is I picked a random number somewhere between 0 and 1, and then I'm going to subtract 0.9 from it. Because 0.9 is first. How often am I going to pick a number between 0 and 1 where I subtract 0.9 and now I have a value less than 0? 90% of the time, right? Only if I pick a number greater than 0.9. If I pick 0.95 and I subtract 0.9, I'm going to have a value of 0.05. So 90% of the time, I'm, when I subtract this, I'm going to be less than 0. When I'm, when I'm out, when I'm done, when I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> You're out. When I'm below 0, that's the thing I'm left with. 10% of the time, I'll pick that number like 0.95, and then I go and subtract 0.1, and I'm out. So 10% of the time, I'll be left the last place I was. I'm starting up here. I pick some random number somewhere. I subtract this. D am I already below 0? Or, or should I keep going? If I subtract this, then I'm about last. So this idea of just I keep subtracting these values, and it doesn't matter what order, right? Even if this was b was first, and I'm always subtracting 0.1 first, I'm only going to be less than 0 if I happen to pick a random number that's less than 0.1. So hopefully this kind of makes it so, uh, some intuitive sense to you. I feel like there's a very smart way to diagram this that I'm not doing, but I've said it enough times. I'm hoping it makes sense. Let's come back to the code. So what do I need to do? Let's say, so if, so what I need to do now is say index plus plus. So I'm going to just keep doing this. I'm going to go through the list until I have now gone below zero. Now there's a little bit, and then I want to say return list index, except for the fact that this isn't exactly right. This isn't exactly right because um, I like how this bracket is highlighted down here. But anyway, forget about that. Um, this isn't exactly right because um, I actually want to. I want if if I say index plus plus, 
I'm going to go one past um, the one that was actually the one that I wanted to pick. <laughs> that makes any sense. So I've got to very quickly just say index minus minus. Let me talk you through that. Right? In the scenario where I just have 0.9 is the probability of, the first of index 0 is 0.9. So I pick a random number. I pick 0.8. I say r equals 0.8 minus 0.9. So that's negative 0.1. Then I say index plus plus, so I go to 1. And I go back to the loop. I don't loop again because I'm now below 0. So I, didn't, I don't want to pick 1. I want to pick 0. So going up is just if I'm continuing. But if I'm not continuing, I've got to oh, back up 1. So this should work, <laughs> I hope. Um, and so I'm going to hit refresh here, and I'm going to say pick one fruits, and I got mango, and I got mango, and I got melon, and I got cherry, a cherry, and I got melon. I'm going to get melon most of the time, right? And so what I could do right now, just to sort of verify that this is working, I am going to say, I'm going to write a little loop here for var j equals zero, j, uh, I don't know, I can, I can use i again. I don't know. Uh, i equals 0, i is less than 100, i plus plus. And I'm going to say var fruit equals pick one fruits. And I'm going to say, I'm going to do var melon count. And if fruit, uh, fruit dot, what was it, name? Fruit dot name equals melon, melon count. Actually, you know what I'm just going to do? That's fine. I, 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 something I could do is I could actually just create a count. Fruit.count plus plus. So I'm going to give all these um, while I'm over here. I'm also going to say fruits index. I'm going to give them all a count of zero. So I'm going to count how many times they've picked. And if this is correct, you know, doing it 100 is a small sample size. We should see that they're picked proportionally to their probability. So let's take a look at that. Let's run it and let's look at fruits. So fruits, the first one is mango, which was picked 30 times at a probability of 29. That makes sense. Blueberry was picked 10 times, you know, its probability was 17. Cherry was picked 7, its probability was 5%. Uh, melon was picked 47. So this, is, this to me is working. Uh, obviously, with just picking it 100 times, it's not going to map so perfectly. You know, I would suspect if I made this 100,000, then those probabilities are going to, over time, going to even out and be, the counts are going to be much closer to the probabilities. Okay, so hopefully you have enjoyed this particular video, which is just about how to pick elements from an array with different probabilities. Uh, and this might uh, work. In a ver and, and, and oh, so what the, the nice thing about this particular algorithm is two things. One is I didn't have to create a separate array with lots of duplicate versions of all these objects in it. And I didn't have to do this thing where I have to pick random numbers multiple times and hope that one qualifies and I could get stuck in an infinite loop. This is going to happen every single time. This is going to always w uh, uh, pick and return a value. You know, sometimes it's going to have to run through this loop a few times, sometimes just once, but it's going to, this is, this is a pretty efficient and fast algorithm for doing this. Okay, so what did I miss? What questions do you have? Did you apply this in something? Uh, I'm going to apply this in something in just a moment. So if, uh, if you look at this video's description, there's a link to a video where I uh, program a solution to the traveling salesperson problem. <laughs> Solution's a little bit strong. I don't know if it's really going to be a solution. An attempt at a solution to the traveling salesperson problem uh, in uh, JavaScript with a genetic algorithm. So thanks for watching. I will see you in another video. Goodbye. <laughs>